evening, people. How we doing? We are live. We are on Lee Judges TV. And I have to say, congratulations to Lee because Lee's in control today, people. I have literally no control of this stream whatsoever. So it is all on Lee Judges in terms of clicking buttons, going live, putting comments up. Wow. I'm going to just say big up. Um, listen, <laughs> welcome yeah, back. Wait, wait, wait till we finish it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was brilliant. I was sitting there, he goes, go live, nothing's happening. And you have to press it again, obviously. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh, oh, live. oh we are live. Uh, and we are live. Um, listen, big up everyone in the chat. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk all things Arsenal. Going to do a little bit of a, a Q&A today um, and just get some questions about what's going on at Arsenal at the moment. Um, listen, it's really interesting for me to see the difference of opinions, Lee, uh, mm. of Arsenal right now. Before we get into it, I want to say a massive happy birthday for yesterday, mate. Oh, um, thank you very much. Cheers, honey, do you know how many people I know on your birthday? It's crazy. There is really? 10 people, really? 10 oh, people no. in my contacts I know that is on the same birthday as you, mate. Wow. And uh, did you have a good day, mate? I had a fantastic day, fantastic couple of days. Obviously, Arsenal uh, didn't get us off to the best of starts, but uh, I went down to London. went on the London Eye, champagne um, uh, VIP reception on there, like, which is very, very nice. And then um, we went to, I'll tell you what, Dan, but if, I don't know if anybody's ever been on it, uh, the 40 Towers experience uh, uh, oh, Hotel it, in so Russell. Oh, unbelievable. I went in Essex and it is absolutely, it is so funny and impressive. Oh. I went on my birthday, funny enough. Really it good, man. So funny. It was absolute brilliant. What, what talented people. It was, uh, I didn't really know what to expect of it. You know what I mean? We said, give it a go. It was absolutely hilarious. It was just fantastic. And uh, if you, you know, of that sort of age and you like a bit of 40 Towers, I have to recommend it. It was fantastic, like, you know. So I've done that. And then had a nice little afternoon tea before we come home yesterday and then went out with uh, some friends and that last night. So really good birthday, like, you know. Um, a bit of Arsenal gear has um, come my way as well, Dan, like, you know, from my birthday, which is very, very nice. So uh, Always welcome, mate. Always yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, all good. So, um, Did you get the third kit? Did you get the third kit? No, no. I've actually, um, I've, I've got, I'm getting that. Uh, uh, I've, I'm getting that. So, uh, um, luckily, no one got, got me that. Like, whether I sort of hinted that I was getting that. So, uh, um, right. yeah. So, uh, and I'm, I'm I, uh, I did hint. About the shorts, but I think I, I I got the you know like the black to the black shirt the black training yeah, gear. I got yeah. the black shorts for that. It was like um I think like uh to marry it all up like you know what I mean. But I did put out a few hints about the white shorts down. I go like oh, I love them, man. They're so yeah. nice. So I will so have nice. to uh, I'll have to uh, go into my own pocket for them like you know what I mean. So uh, <laughs> but I, I definitely no, class, get man. Oh, they're class. Their class, you know what I mean. So, uh, no, listen, I'm glad you had a good birthday, mate. I'm, yeah. I must admit, it was funny when because I saw your pictures. Like I thought, it's Basil Forty. He's only gonna done the old Forty Tower. <laughs> I did that. My parents took me, and I went, and it was so good. And oh, uh, I must admit, so talented. And and you know, like they spoke to us afterwards, just speaking normally, but they were out of character. It was just a bizarre thing, you know. And I thought they were fantastic. And to a T, absolutely to oh, a T. Incredible, and, incredible. And, life, you know, like, absolutely. well, well recommended. Yeah, uh, yeah. If anybody hasn't gone on, I, I do recommend it. And the, the Basil Forty was like, uh, like, you know, it's like I'm not being old. Dan, me and you couldn't do Basil Forty. We couldn't do it. Like, you know, what I mean, you've got to be yeah. tall. You got to look like. And he was like a spitting image of him, really. But so, so much alike him. It was fancy. You know, it was it was incredible. It was incredible. It's so, like yeah. it's like act like, but they also look like as well. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. You've got to have that, haven't you? You've got to have yeah. that. You know what I mean, like, and uh, yeah. you know, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was something I really like. I, I really enjoyed. It. it was a great, great night. I didn't want it to. Do you know when it comes to an end? I didn't want it yeah. to end. You know, like, I, and the concepts of it, they actually serving you. Do it like, did that was the same that's thing right. with you? Like, you know what I mean? And that's right. Like, and it goes wrong, doesn't it? It goes wrong, and they start going. Everyone, yeah. stop eating. Uh, the yeah. chef drops his teeth in your soup and all Dropped that. Sort of soup, yeah. <laughs> 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 Why not call it from there on? But like, yeah, yeah, no, exactly no, absolutely, it, right. but that is sort of thing that happens, from, right. You know what class. I mean? Like, uh, uh, oh, it's, it it you know what I mean? Uh, oh, Sybil stop. comes running out. Stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> and Manuel's there. Was he there? Uh, 
Oh, yeah, Manuel's there, and he, oh, no, I, no, I, I will, no. will say that one thing. He comes out uh, with the bread rolls, and he's just throwing them. <laughs> got to catch your bread roll. He, he's absolutely brilliant, like. I mean, yeah, like, he's uh, class, uh, man. Don't drop your roll, otherwise you've had it. Your... Yeah. <laughs> well, I went with my, my dad, and they said, and he said, right, man, well, I want you to collect the glasses, and he goes up to my old man, takes his oh, glasses. Oh, he takes the glasses. Like... <laughs> <laughs> class, <laughs> man. Yeah, <laughs> Absolute class, man. Top quality, 40 towers. Well, it won't be beaten. That and Fools and Horses for me. Oh, two quality programs. Two top. Apparently, yeah, they only made six episodes of that. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, it was because, yeah, they only, they split up, didn't they? John yeah, Cleese thought, and Connie yeah. Booth. And yeah, they stopped we, the series, which was yeah, that, sad, really. But um, Yeah, so they only made uh, six episodes of that, like, which is, you know, scandalous, really. Like, you can watch like, them all it's still now and still be yeah. funny. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Like 40, really 50 really. years on, crazy. Um, listen, oh, Hamish says, I'll have a Wardorf salad. I like that. Fair play, Hamish. Um, <laughs> listen, I think it's, I think it's time to talk Arsenal. Um, I want to ask you, Lee, because there's been a lot of people that have been very, very undecisive over these last couple of days about what happens next. Um, I do personally feel that it's a bit strange, if I'm honest with you. Um, I don't. I don't think there should be many Arsenal fans happy with what we've seen in the last couple of games. That's just my opinion, right? That's what I think might be wrong, and people might disagree with it. But if you sit there and and look at it, I've spoken to a lot of football fans over the last couple of days on my channel and other channels that I've been on, Lee, and they're all saying the same as me and you. They're all saying the same. There's only Arsenal fans that seem to really, really want Mikel to do absolutely well, which, to be fair, is the majority of us that aren't questioning this. Now, some of them are. Some of them are saying, even I don't get what he's doing and I've, I've really rate the lad. But there's a lot of Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, West Ham, Newcastle, all shaking their heads going, I thought Arsenal were going to have Declan Rice in for Chaka and that was it. And they keep going and they go for it this season. Now, we ain't seen that. And my question to you is, Lee, why is he doing it? Because I can't answer that question. Why do you think this system has changed for Mikel? I, I I don't understand it really. I I, I get um I get I get Declan Rice coming in at this moment. I did see Declan Rice as probably like playing that role as you're saying, and then like maybe in a year of time when Thomas Party ages a little bit, going back to there or or bringing in another holding midfield player. I thought that we that's what we was going to do, and and. Uh, because I think with Declan Rice, he could do do that role, you know. Um, listen, if you can change Thomas Part, uh, sorry, if you can transform Granite Xhaka in that role, then you can do it to Declan Rice. That's how I look at it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's how I see it. Um, but I think for whatever reason, you know, the Kai Havertz one is, I, I think it's a good sign because for, for squad depth, but... It's where you're going to play him, like you know. And we we spoke about this before. He can play up front and everything like that. And I'm, I'm I'm probably in Champions League games and things like that. He may well do. I thought if I if I be really honest, our best performance um, was the Community Shield without uh, Jesus, shall I say? And, and he was playing in that up up front role. Um, and and against a very very good side, but. I've got to be really honest. We've played Crystal Palace. We've played um, Fulham and Nottingham Forest. None of them are going to be in the top half of the table then. None of them, you know. Uh, so realistically, if you're going to be looking to win things, you've got to be. We got. We should be on nine points so far this season. I looked at Man City's first three games. You know, all right, Newcastle at home, difficult one. But I would have said um, three. Um, you know, like that they were going to get nine points. The team that's having the best. Best time of it at the moment. The team that I would say is going to be is uh, I know they're on the same points as us, but I think they're <laughs> dare I say it four to six points in front of us is Liverpool. Um, yeah, away to Chelsea and away to Newcastle. I've been there away games. You know, um, that's a tough tough start. Then really, like you know, what I mean yeah. to go to go away on those two games and get. Uh, a point at Chelsea, which you would take on a normal day, and, and and three points at Newcastle from being ten men as well. I think that they've done really, really well. Now, if you look at our our seven points, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like um, yeah. they're against teams Good that point. have been, you know, average. You look at Tottenham, 
uh, seven points, but in those games there, two away games in, in that, and, and a home game against Manchester United. So they're even though they're on the same points, they're in front of us as well. And West Ham, away to Brighton and away to Bournemouth, and at home to Chelsea. He's three difficult games, Dan. You know what I mean? Like, and they've got, and that's a good return from them. So when you look at us, when people turn around and say, oh, seven points out of nine's um, pretty good. Not in my book. Not in my book with the opposition that you're playing. I think that, you know, it's it's not good. Um, so at the moment, we're, I, I think we're, like last season, we picked up nine points against those teams with more goals. Uh, but I wasn't convinced. I, I wasn't, listen, when we go back to the Crystal Palace game, we, we've spoke about this, you know, and um, we got the result. We did control the game and all that, but I wasn't convinced, and it, it wasn't me saying yes. I'm, 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 I'm believing in all this. I was excited. I know it sounds silly. I go on the back last season. Every time I, I when I pre said I was excited about the Arsenal last season. I was really excited about going and watching the game. I'm not, I haven't got that excitement now. Now someone come up to me on on Saturday, Dan, and come up with a fantastic point. Walked up to me. I was at the bar. Um, my mate. Um, Greg's dad it was and uh, I've never met him before but he just said hello Lee the first thing he said to me I expected better <laughs> and I think that's what summed yeah. it up for me really Dan. That, is, that does me. sum it up man that, that, that really does sum it up do you know what though Lee it sums it up for fans but also every neutral fan I've spoken to bruv says mm. I expected better from Arsenal like Man United Liverpool Newcastle they all it for what a start for Arsenal Palace, Forest and Fulham. Oh, that's nine points for them. And it ain't. So, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm going to read out one of the Super Chats here. He, Ross, says, stop doing the potions, Arteta. Get back to the basics. And that's a great Super Chat for me because that's yeah. all. Get back yeah. to the basics. Get back to what worked. And like you said right at the start, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Uh, but Vickers says, do you think that if Mikel wished to tinker or experiment, then maybe you should do it when we're two or three nil up? <laughs> Personally, I'm not happy at all with him. And what he's been doing this season? Listen, I, 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 I the, you know, people go, uh, and, I, and I had a little bit of a, a rant yesterday about this and all that. Like when people say, "Yeah, he's got to try and uh, tinker," we don't want to be caught out. We don't want to be sussed out, and we, you know, you've got to try and uh, move things on a little bit, like you know. So I looked at that and I thought, we, we've only done, we've only had one bloody good season. It's not like we've played five or six fantastic seasons and people have yeah, yeah. It's like ripped that up from the last five years and started so, again. Yeah, so I, I get that to a certain degree, you know what I mean? What I looked at it and I thought, bloody hell, we, you know, whether, it, whether you you think it, it's, um, how can I say, fantastic from the manager or it's a little bit of good fortune. Sometimes, you know, you stumble across something, you know, uh, Ben White going at right back, stumbled across that. I thought that was better. I look at Ben White at central defence, like in the game on Saturday in in particular, right? In particular, I look at that in more. more he never won a header, Dan. You know, oh, it, when you're playing right back, it's not so important to win to win headers. Even though he's a very very good, I think Ben White's a very very good defender one on one defending. If I were to say there's a weakest part of his game, it's his heading. Doesn't Error. win enough yeah, headers. I agree. So you know maybe. I thought, well, that's a very, very clever thing that Arteta's done there. He's put him to right back and he's been fantastic. We, we had a very, very good sound back back four. Now, he's obviously looked to a change. I think Timber being injured has been a big, big loss. But then saying that, when Timber was playing, Thomas Partey was still playing in that inverted right. He didn't have to do that. You could have actually inverted it on the, on the left-hand side, whether he weren't so sure of it. Now that Shinchenko's fit, I expect to see him coming in and then the right back being back to normal, and then the two central defence. Because whatever you look at it, I, I, I don't think that we needed to... You know when they say, oh, we need to make it a little bit better? Well, I think you do that by getting in better players. Keep the same system going. Keep them doing 100%. that. percent Nobody but, wanted this system to change, Lee. I don't no. know one Arsenal fan that wanted to see a new formation, system, anything. Do you just upgrade on what you've got? And yeah. the one thing I don't get, right, and this is what no one can answer. I do not get this. This is why I don't understand this system. Last season, we had a centre-half pairing that complemented each other in Gabriel and Saliba. He's taken that apart. We don't know why Gabriel was missing out, but he has for three games now. Ben White 
he was all right at centre back in his first year, but I think I remember saying to you, I don't think he's outstanding, Lee. I think he's all right at right back, though. Sensational, not yeah, seen him. Yeah. Thomas Party for me, along with Rodri and Casemiro, unbelievable central defensive midfielder. Not seen him there once. Right back. Everybody's excited by Party, Rice, and Erdegaard this season. Yet to see it once in the middle. And what then is happening is people are now looking at Saka and Martinelli, who have still scored goals, by the way, and going. Not too sure about those two this season because the system is affecting them. Ben White and Saka, for me, other than Gareth Southgate, has worked for everybody down that right-hand side. And we haven't seen it this season. I know Ben White does go out there, but it ain't like it was last season with Saka and Ben White. And Martinelli's played in front of about seven different left-backs since pre-season. So nothing's working in that system, in my opinion, apart from him who believes that it's going to get the best out of the player that he signed for £65 million in Kai Havertz. And unfortunately, mate, he might be falling on this Kai Havertz sword earlier than he expected because it ain't working, this new system, man. And it's got to revert back, Lee. Yeah. And I, 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 I listen, uh, I was talking about this today. If Kai Havertz, I, look, listen, the first two games, I think he's done okay, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think he's done okay, right? But he's been not sensational. Say, for instance, you change if if he'd have put if he'd have put in three performances like Fabio Vieira did when he came on yesterday, right? You can yeah. turn around and say to yourself, "Do you know what? It, the system ain't working, but it's benefiting us because he's been sensational." But that's the, the he's just been okay, Dan. You know what I mean, like now. But what I think also, which has been um, missed out on this, there. Do you think Saka's been playing that well? No, no. Is there a reason for that? Well, maybe because he hasn't got Ben White. And that's oh, what I've just said. That is what I believe. So you don't know. You know, you look at it on the left-hand side. Shinchenko's been injured. That, that That's happened. For whatever reason, they've decided to let Granit Xhaka go. So has Martinelli played that well in the, in the three? He's done okay, but he's not been brilliant. Why? Because he he, he the parts... Different left-back behind him every time. Different left-back, different wide left player. So he's suffered a little bit, like, you know. So... Um, has Saliba suffered? Maybe not. No, but I, I didn't. I, I, I've watched the game back now. I've managed to watch it today. Like you know, the header ratio from our players was a joke. We didn't win no headers at all. Like, yeah. I don't know if Saliba. You see, Saliba's one of these central defenders that's more you know like watching the ball come to him and playing. You know, he's like a, a cultural central. You need some like. Gabriel, for instance, is an aggressive defender. He's the one that goes there and wins things and all that. Like, so in that game on Sat Saturday, we, we didn't even a... see him come on. Didn't no. even see him come on. We needed a, an, an aggressor that was going to win headers, and then we can get things from there. So I, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm miffed by what what's going on because the other thing of it is like you know what I mean like and 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 and, and the people that. Don't see Mikel doing anything wrong or turn around and say, ah, oh, yes, but Saliba, uh, sorry, uh, Partey isn't playing right back. He's not played right back. He was playing right back most of that time. There was a three occasions he's chasing back. He ain't getting back on the on the left-sided player. Like, yes, he does come inside, but for a majority of that game, I've watched it, he was playing in a right-back position. Now, so not only we're we not getting the best out of Saka, maybe Martinelli, things are not going. We took our best holding midfield player out of holding midfield. Now, <laughs> I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't, I don't really want to. Um, I'm not criticising Declan Rice when I say this. Please, please believe me when I say this because I'm a big fan. Last season, when they were talking about holding midfielders, there was a three-way conversation between Casemiro, Rodri. And party, you know, I mean, we'd all argue it was party, we'd all argue it was um, uh, Man City fans with Rodri, Man United fans. No one was really c coming in and saying, Well, Declan Rice is in that um, free as well. Like, and no one was doing that. Now, I know that he's playing for West Ham and whatever, like, you know, what I mean, but what my, my point being is that Thomas Party was sensational last season, right? Up until the last few games of the season, which I, I felt we may have picked up a knock or whatever, like you know. So I don't really understand why you would take him out of there and put him to right to right back. Now I had an argument with Robbie about it and all that, like you know, last. Season. I watched the Nottingham Forest game last season. You know, when he when he uh, done that thing, Dan, right, and mm. it didn't work. 
then I've gone over to America, right? Um, Shinchenko wasn't playing in any of those, by the way, right? But but um, uh, Timber was. Timber, yeah. I didn't see in pre-season games Thomas Party playing in that right back inverted position at all. Same, right? So he doesn't play it then. He doesn't play at um, the charity, the Community Shield game. And then we go into our first game of the season and he's there. And then you get, you know, it, it, did, I, did, did you really think it, it worked against Nottingham Forest? I've seen no. Man United score three goals against them this week. We scored five against them last season. I don't think I don't think it worked, if I'll be honest. And man. that's the thing. I said this, Lee. I said last season we beat Forest 5-0, we beat Palace 2-0, and we beat Fulham 2-1. This year... We got a 2-1 victory against Forest. We got a 1-0, yeah, we're down to 10 men, a win against Palace. And we drew the Fulham 2-2. And then the worrying thing for me was Mikel Arteta's press conference. He says, well, we created a lot more chances. We should have won five or six. And we played 10 times better than when we won against Fulham last year. That suggests to me, judges, he ain't changing anything, mate. No. Yeah? There's nothing yeah, he's yeah. changing. So, uh, And this is my problem, man. Um, I've got some super chats that I'm going to read. Uh, this is from Big Dog. who says, I'm a United fan here with a different perspective. I'm expecting Arsenal to win the league. Uh, sorry, expecting Arsenal to win the league is too pr premature. You're six years without Champions League, getting it back-to-back -back progress. Um, maybe you're right. And uh, Ola's in the chat as well. Big up, Ola, man. Love, says the Fight Week show. Ola here, big love to Judge Potsy and the chat room. Big up, Ola. Um, listen, I think Big Dog's got a, a, a point there. Maybe it was no, too premature. No. But, listen, we we're should be... We're not going to win the league out Nah, we're, we're not talking about that yet. This is the first three games. This system does not work. I want us to challenge for the league. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, like, I want us to... I. I can, can I be as bold to say if we carry on playing like this, we ain't challenging top four, let alone titles? Yeah, that's my opinion. What I'm saying is that uh, last season we, I, I think, eight months of the season we went toe to toe with Man City. The reason that we didn't win the league, I believe, is because um, we didn't have strength in depth when we lost Saliba. Uh, and, and um, Tommy Asu, right? So I, I don't think that it was the system. I don't think it was playing things out. It was just a lack of depth in, in the squad. So strengthen that up and then that'll be okay. You, you have to ask yourself, forget even about the Thomas Party one, Dan. Let's forget about that one now, right? Yeah. The Trossard one, you know, dropping Eddie. Why, why, why drop Eddie? What was all that about? You know what I mean? Like uh, bizarre, right? Uh, bizarre, really. Like you know what I mean? Like now, Eddie's. And I was coming. calling for Trossard, by the way, but not instead of Eddie. I was calling for Trossard, but in a different system. But you know, Eddie comes on and proves why he shouldn't have dropped him. I suppose, but it was it was a mad one, and the Gabriel one, no one can answer either. Lee. So it ain't just party. You're right. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's uh, for me. Um, I, I I don't understand it now. If if Right, put yourself in this position, and I, I'm I'm trying to be Trossard, or I'm trying to be Eddie at this moment in time, right? And you're sitting like in a table, like we are now, because listen, players talk, you know, yeah. like, as much as fans, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I'm not getting in this team. I, I was the best player in pre-season. Um, I, I, I've really worked hard. I've trained hard, and can't get a game, you know what I mean? Like, and, and Eddie's saying, well, I've scored a couple of goals here. I've made the penalty at Palace. If I don't play, I'm all right. I missed a chance, but if I still got the penalty and, and contributed into the game, I'm being left out. But, but old uh, Kai over there, he's not really done better than me and you in pre-season or in the last couple of games. How comes I'm getting dropped and you're not? And he's not. And you have to go, you have to believe that, you know, what, what is there? And then you can might have Gabriel walking into the conversation, go, well, I've done well for two years. I've, I don't know what have I done. There's something gone on there. So I hear that, that uh, there's a little bits of rumbling going on. This is what I have to say with it all now, like, you know, is that maybe where well, I'm not going to panic so much and all that because Arteta's now got to have a big squad 
a little bit of a bigger squad. It's a different, it's a different kind of managing now for him. Like, you know what I mean? When you've got good players, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know that you've got a couple of youth players on the bench that you ain't got to worry about coming on or off. Do you know what I mean? But you know that if you, how can I say, if you know, if you, I don't know, it's just for instance, I'm going to pick on a player. Who can I pick on? Maybe like Smith Rowe or maybe even, um, Gabriel uh, Jesus, who might, if they don't get on, just imagine they're on the bench on Saturday, uh, Sunday, and they don't get on. They're, they're going to have a little bit more of a moan or a clout than a young kid that's in the. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so. I don't, I don't I, know what you're saying. I, I think it's a difficult situation for him. But listen, this is, this is something that is part of the process, isn't it? You knew he was going to get to a certain level, and this is going to, going to happen, like, you know. And, um, Big so pressure, I man. I don't like this um, and 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 thing when people turn around and saying like, "Oh, well, let's get rid of the manager. We need a new man. Get him sacked and all that." It's not better. Mikel's put us in this position, so he deserves the chance to to be able to manage it. In my opinion, that's this is only yeah, man. three games in, but there's pressure on him, isn't there? Pressure yeah, this season. Absolutely, absolutely. There's pressure. This is the thing. You know what I mean? Like. Because he's got us to the, to the to, uh, in a title challenge and has got us to top four, that does not mean to say that you're that's all the pressure off and all, all of that. Like, in fact, I think it builds up more pressure because expectations levels go up, and I think that he needs to be um, accountable for everything. Like, you know, there is pressure on him now, which is what what you need to have. You know, you're at Arsenal Football Club. You know, you 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 you're drilled in to win games, Dan. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I think that. You know, there should be pressure on. But I th- it's like comments in the um, in, in, in the group chat that we're in. I'm not going to mention names and all that. Like, you know, there was a few guys in there criticising the, the tactics and the team. No one turned around and said they wanted him sacked, by the way. And and people jump on it. Well, who do you want in the, who do you want as manager then? And that, that is not the debate that you're having. It's crazy, isn't it? Not now, you know what I mean? Like, I'll tell you who I want as manager of Arsenal come the... Man United game and come the, the few and go, I want Mikel Arteta. But, you know, but when he does something wrong, or well, I don't agree with you, you are allowed to to question it. You are allowed to to, to, to criticise. And it's not because you, you want a new manager, Dan. It's not got nothing to do with it. But like you, you get, well, who else you want then? There ain't no one else out there. You know, now... <laughs> That, that is There's a lot of reaction that is. I don't, I don't yeah. understand that reaction. I don't understand that. Man, Man United got a new manager um, when when Ollie weren't doing the business. Tottenham have got a, a manager now. You know, look at look at Tottenham with their their two. They got two managers like serial winners in um, Conte and uh, uh, Mourinho that we was worried about was going to turn Spurs around. It's it's really an unknown um, Australian manager. Like no disrespect. Who's turning them around, and, and and now is getting everybody worried about about them. So it's not necessarily you've got to be this high profile manager and whatever. Blah 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 blah. It's what is best for the football club. And I, I think at this moment in time, still Mikel is the best for Arsenal, but he's got to sit out of system and go for it. And you know, if you're going to tinker, like you know, what I mean, like, do the players need to be rested at this moment in time? I don't think so. They've got internationals coming up in the next week. They all get games there, like you know, what yeah, I mean, like get rested there, they? <laughs> no, no, but like for instance, you know, oh, I've got to get Trossard some minutes, or I've got to get uh, Smith Rowe some minutes, or I've got to get uh, somebody else has got to get minutes. They're all going to get minutes for their international side, which to me, I don't care what happens uh, result wise, they're going to get minutes. So I think that's a good thing. Smith Rowe might go in the under 20. Ones I don't know, but blah blah blah. They all get minutes. They all come back. Then you start tinkering a little bit with the team, which I can understand. Um, when you go to, uh, I think we go to Everton, and then I think we got Champions League on the Tuesday or, or the Wednesday, and then we got Tottenham. Then you can start the League Cup game. You can make a few changes. I don't think we really needed. To, we should have just gone with what is our strongest side over the last four games. Yeah. Uh, like like these like four games, get twelve points on the board, and then go from that. That's how I would have looked at it. Uh, you know, yeah. what I mean? uh, but um, and it's I, fine when you're winning. When you're playing like this and you're winning, no one cares. Oh, we're winning. Shut up. But I did question this, and I said I didn't yeah. like it against Forest. I didn't like it against Palace. And then when you say you don't like it when you drop points, everyone goes quiet. But it's okay when you're winning. Shut up. It's all up. It's fine. He's doing a great job. But then. 
I heard a lot of the excuses at the weekend is the players. Now, I'm with you to a certain degree. I thought it was a poor mistake from Saka. I thought we defended the corner abysmally. And I thought that it was straight away. We've seen now, I think Graham's stat said that in nine months, we've made four or five mistakes in the first minute of the game at the Emirates. That's poor. You can't win a title like that. That's poor, right? I get it. But actually, the system was a real problem for me. And it wasn't being called out by some fans. I didn't understand why, man. So I need to see it changed. Um, and then, on, the, listen, the, other, the other thing is, Dan, I've got, I've got to say on two two points here, like, you know, um, you would get, you know, like, forget about everything. We get it to 2-1. <laughs> I'll look back on it now. We get it to 2-1. You get away with it, Dan. You know what I mean? You say, oh, well, you, you know, you got away with it, Mikel. It's not Mikel's fault, the poxy defending from, from the corner. It's not Mikel's fault. You know, Shinchenko, I thought, was brilliant when he came on. Gives a stupid ball away at 2-1. I, like, you know I mean? I, I look back at that. Decision-making and professional football is is one of the reasons why they are professional footballers, Dan. You know what I mean? Because their decision-making is better than the, than the uh, uh, players that go as you go down the leagues, like, you know. Uh, the percentage of that pass when you're 2-1 two, two up, was poor, you know what I mean, and also against ten men, like you know. But it, but you you're up against ten men. I, I you can't blame M- Mikel for that, like you know. I look back on it there. He's tr- chucks on a few of the players, and and I, I I look at that last ten fifteen minutes when it's down to t- ten men. I, I put a lot of that on the, the players. I really do because you know yeah. you've got thirteen minutes left of a game with ten men, and we don't really create a chance. We don't really do that. I feel like you say Zinchenko has poor ball to give away that. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't really uh, look good. There was a couple of occasions when players were being a bit lazy and drift drifting offside, and players weren't playing at their best. So that's just the the, the way it goes. There. Now the other one is that what, what people turn around and and, uh, and have hit back at me uh, and said, or not hit back, but just you know, make oh, we've got to be patient. You know what I mean? Like it's only three games gone. It's you know we've got to see how it goes. You know what I mean? Like it's early days and all that. Like right, I, I get I get that, but this is we're in a league now where you where you can't let Man City get too many points in front of I you, Dan, Otherwise it's over. So you know we you know for instance we, we you know this might start working in February. Uh, sorry, in say in October, but then you're ten points behind Man City by then. Like it's it's done. It, well, can it, I read something out to you, which I find interesting? Um, Manchester City have got their next four games, um, which is Fulham at home, which we've just had. They'll win that. They won't draw that like we did. They've got West Ham away. To be fair, West Ham are playing well, but I'd fancy Man City to beat them still. Then they've got Forest at home, and then they've got Wolves away. I expect Manchester City to win all four of them, right? They will. Yeah, be very, yeah. very, so, very surprised if they very don't. Very surprised if they don't. Let me read out our next six games. Manchester United at home. Everton away, where we lost last year. Spurs at home. Bournemouth away. Man City away. Chelsea away. Uh, sorry, Man City at home. Chelsea away. Right? So, in the next six games, we've got Man United, Tottenham, Man City and Chelsea. And in the away games, we've got Bournemouth and Everton. Not easy. Not easy. And I don't expect full house points there in those games. So already, like you've just said, we're then in mid-October and we could be too far adrift off of Man City to even contemplate winning a title. Now, I know this is a very negative way to look at it, Lee, but sometimes you've got to be realistic. If we were blitzing Fulham, Palace and uh, who we just played? Fulham, Palace and Forest by four or five goals in the old system that we loved and really enjoyed watching. I'd be like, bring it on. I don't care who we've got. Them six games, let's I can have it. Yeah. I'm not feeling like that because I'm watching a team and a system at the moment that is getting past Forest, Palace and Fulham. And I don't want to disrespect teams because I never do. Right. But we drop points at Fulham. We scrape past with 10 men against Palace and we weren't convincing against Forest. I don't care what anyone says. Five more minutes. They're launching balls in a box and we're looking nervy. Right. And it could be 2-2. So I'm sorry, mate. I need to see something change. But I want to ask you, is he going to change it in these games? Is Are we going to see Man United at the weekend? Are we going to see Jesus coming back in up top? Zinchenko left. Gabriel left centre back. Rice party and Erdegaard in the middle. Boom. I don't think we are. Well, 
this is a great, it's a great question for me. I think you, you know, um, there's there's an old saying in football, isn't there? Like you know, you play your best, you play your strongest team as as many times as you can. I know that's changed now because you've got the squad rotation and things like that. But even like when we, like, you know, I just mentioned like when we play our vets football and all that. Like we play, we play teams that you think you're going to beat, and and you make one or two changes. But when it comes to the big games, the big guns are playing. You know what I mean? That that's how it is. Like you know. Uh, and um, I expect that against Man United, like you know, solid back four. I, I, I will be very, very de- like. There's one position that I think is up for grabs for me, right? And I'll tell you what, like, I, I'll be, I'll be disappointed if this isn't the team. So it'd be Ramsdale in goal for me, right back Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel coming back, Shinchenko, midfield three of Rice. Partey and Udegaard and then Martinelli and Saka wide and then there's the decision. That's the decision for me, right? And there's three players come into this for me, right? Jesus, Eddie, Havertz, right? No Trossard. No. Nah. Trossard on the bench. Um... I don't, I don't think that's his position. I, I think he's, you know, he, he was poor the other day. That's not his fault. But I, I you, you, all right, bring bring Trossard into it as the fourth, like you know what I mean. So that's for me is the four that you go with, like you know. Now, if he was to play Eddie and not Jesus, I understand it. You know what I mean? Eddie's done well, like you know what I mean. Like I'm, you know, Jesus hasn't had no game time. Like I can get that. If he plays Jesus. You know, he's your number one, he's your main striker. If you go at the beginning of the season, who's your main striker? It's him. So I put it this way, like, you know, if um uh Tottenham when Harry Kane was uh, had a couple of games off, would Harry Kane start against Man United? Yes. So he's, if he's your main man, I think he starts. I've got a feeling that Kai Havertz will start. That's who I think will start. And and that will be in that position there. That's what I think it will go, go. So basically, revert into the Manchester City game, but with Shinchenko in, in instead of Timber. I, I, I'll be very, very surprised if Havertz is on the bench. Now, people will go, oh, why not on that? Because I think that when you spent this money, 65 million, I think you want to see it work. Um his best game for Arsenal, I think, still has been that that game at, at the Community Shield. So, I I, I think that it, you know it, that that is the position that I've, if I see you know Kivier playing instead of Gabriel, which could happen as a central defender in a in a back four, there's something gone on with Gabriel. There's been there's been something internal gone on, you know, because it's not just tactical, like you know. So. Um, yeah. And then I'll get what I, I'm, I'm going to start to worry then because I look at Tierney and I think something's gone on there. And I, you look at other players that, that's happened to, you know, you can't keep doing this. You know what I mean? I don't think you can turn around and say that uh, you may be questioning Abamyang for his unprofessionalism and whatever. Like, I don't think you can question Tierney's. I don't think you can question Gabriel's over the last few years, you know. The other the other thing, Dan, that he does is that um and don't be surprised if he does this. This is well, that that's my team, by the way, like you know. Um and, and if you ask me, put me on the spot, I would go with Jesus, right? Because I think he's the main that's because he's the main man. But I, I wouldn't be upset if he sees anywhere. It would not surprise me. Uh, you know, you might think I'm silly here, right? That Thomas Party gets left out. And puts on the bench. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. And that would, would be, be insane. Party, party. It'd be Havertz, Ulegaard, and Declan Rice as the midfield line. Like, you know. Now, I don't know. I, I, you know, this is the thing with you know. And people turn around and go, "Well, it's great, and it? if you don't know the team, nor does nor does uh, nor does the manager of, of the opposition like you know." And I get that, but I also like to see. Continuity, players playing well, you know what I mean? Momentum, momentum, momentum man. Yeah. So, what would it's your team be out of interest? What would you go for? Uh, I mean, my t- I'll tell you what I think it will be, but uh, I'll tell you first what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Let's say so, like I've done it. So, what you would uh, play. What I would then, play. Um, anybody would in be... the comments wants to put up some comments 
what, what yeah. they think the team would be or, or what they... I, I would or, go with Ramsdale. Or... I wouldn't drop Ramsdale for Raya after that mistake that everyone said it was his fault. His positioning you could question, but I thought it was a poor ball from Saka. Um, he kept us in that game at the end by that save. So for me, Ramsdale stays in. Uh, at right back, I'd go Ben White. At left back, I'd go Zinchenko. I'd have Gabriel back as a left centre-half and then Saliba as a right centre-half. My midfield trio would be Party, Rice and Erdegaard. And then I would go with Saka, Martinelli and Jesus, right? That would be what my 11 would be. I think that's our best 11 when everyone's fit. And that's what I would go with against Man United. What I think the team will be, I honestly believe it will be the same team that we saw against Fulham. And I think Tommy Asu might come back in instead of Kivior. And I think he'll use Zinchenko, Jesus and Trossard as the subs, along with maybe Smith Rowe Vieira. I think it will be Eddie and Havertz. I think it will be Saka and Martinelli. I think it will be Rice and Erdegaard. And then he'll go with this back line of party, um, Saliba. And I think it will be Tommy Asu and White. And then Ramsdale in goal. That's what I think the team will be. But it could be wrong, man. I don't know. And so if you change party, you, stay at right back. I think he'll stay at right back. I think he'll keep it. Because he said at the press conference, we created so many chances. And on a different day, it would have been five, six or seven. That doesn't sound like a manager that says, yeah, we didn't work out for us today. And we need to be better next week. Then I'd go, oh, OK, he's going to change it. But he didn't. He said, we were better than Fulham last year where we won. We were uh, 10 times better than them. We had five or six chances to, and we didn't take our chances. And when we give away silly goals like that, you can't win the game. That doesn't say to me this system didn't work, Lee. That says it was the players who messed up. It made it impossible for us to win the game. We missed our chances. We created more than we did last year. This system's working. And I think they'll keep it the way yeah. it is, man. Um, <clears throat> I really do. Let me read out a couple of these super chats. Yeah. Uh, this one comes in from Omeli. He says, how much do you think the energy from the fans around the team boosted the team last season? It feels like our fan base this season is not as behind the team. Arsenal versus the world. Um me and you both mentioned this yeah. about the atmosphere yeah. and the balloting system, and I do think it's affected it. I really do. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that the, the the fans are not behind the the players because of no. the, the system and all that. I, I I'm, I'm with you. I don't know what it, what it's like where you're sitting, but a few people that I spoke to said, you know, that it's three games now, and they've had different people around them all the time, like you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and it, like. Where I sit, there's, we're all the same people there all, at week. So you get to to know what they're like. Um, you know, like some shout and scream, some like every decision that, that it goes wrong, you 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 know, well that, that's him just being like he is. And then when when something goes well, everybody is the best thing since sliced bread. There's always the Mister Positive around that sort of area. So you get to use used to who you're sitting with, don't you? Like you know, so if you're sitting with someone you don't really know and all that, it can be a little bit affected, I, I, I believe. And I, I, I felt that the atmosphere wasn't uh, wasn't great against Nottingham Forest. I, I felt that that was because of all the the chaos before the game with the tickets and also a half past 12 kickoff. So I thought that the atmosphere was going to be back to that electric. Thing. Listen, it wasn't bad on Saturday, Dan. I'm not saying it wasn't bad because it was still very, very good, but it wasn't. It's, it wasn't like it was last season. No win. I yet. agree. Hundred percent. Hundred percent agree. Uh, Alex Smith has also said the problem is Kai Havertz. Why did we buy him? I worry over the Champions League now. If he's there, do you think Havertz is ideal for us? Now, what I will say to this, Lee, it ain't just him, right? He's getting a lot of stick, and I understand that he's not had a good game. But it ain't just him that's been poor, right? But I do think Mikel Arteta has put himself under unbelievable, unnecessary mm. pressure here because this one has to work, mate. This one has to work. It's 65 million. It's his signing. From what the Arsenal uh, guys of inside are telling me, this was all on Arteta. Edu didn't, and the scouting system did not look at Havertz. This was Arteta who wanted his get man. And at the moment, he is playing ahead of everyone. I mean, he is literally in that yeah. side as the main key man. So this has got to work, Lee, isn't it? 100% it's got to work. And I think that there's a couple of decisions. Uh, I, I think Mikel has put himself under a little more pressure, that, that being one of them. I think that, if I if I'm if I'm feeling that the the, the signing is based towards Champions League football as well, I think that because he can play in a few different positions, I I think that that's why the way that he's gone on that. But I'm I'm with you on this. I think that he's put himself under immense pressure because it's sixty five million pounds spent when we could have bought another midfield holding midfield player 
because I think that we've got enough players that can play that role. You know, that's my opinion. Um, but um, there's there's no one perhaps that can do it up front like him. So from that point of view, there, and I think that I'm going to say it now that the, the, the um, Ramsdale and Rayo one is putting pressure on him as well. Because I, put it this way, Dan, like you know, um, and I'll ask you this question. A lot of people have criticised Ramsdale um, for the first goal. I can see why it, it, it isn't great, you know what I mean? But I think he's unlucky. You know, as you turned around earlier on in the show and said, he made a fantastic save. Right. I've heard people now in our groups that we're in and all that, time to bring in Raya. You know what I mean, right? Now, I'll ask you the question. After seeing that goal on Saturday, if Turner is in our goalkeeper... Would you be saying, right, I've got to drop Rams down now? So if Turner makes that mistake at the weekend. No, no, Ramsdale's in goal. Yeah. Right. That goal's oh, happened. I get what so you now, mean. Right, are you now putting in the group? Turner's got to come in. No, no chance. No. No, no. chance. Not for me. People are Not now. For me. So there's pressure now being put, untold pre unnecessary pressure being put on now when I don't see that there was that need to do that. Yeah, and listen, I'm a big fan of David Raya. I think he's a great goalkeeper. And I actually quite like the fact that we've got two goalkeepers now. I, I like but it. I don't think, pressure. But yeah, exactly. And that's what is, is going to be difficult. But I think that's what Mikel Arteta has asked for. And that's where he's got to do sort this out. For me, Aaron Ramsdale, positioning was all wrong for that first goal, right? But in his defence, he didn't know Saka was going to give a suicide pass. To, to their striker, right? So then he's got his feet wrong. Oh, crikey, what are you doing to me, Bukayo? Oh, no, I'm not going to get that, right? And to be fair, Pereira scuffed it, actually, when you look at the yeah, shot. Yeah, so it's quite lucky the way that it went in, right? So that's fair, right? But I will say this. He kept us in that game. And he has done last season. People forget. I think he gets a lot of unnecessary stick. He's not really well liked, Aaron Ramsdale, by anybody but other than Arsenal fans. I've noticed this on my on my channel. Oh, we don't like Ramsdale. He won't be that great for Arsenal. You know, even for, after two years of being one of our most consistent and brilliant players, he's been told, no, no, Raya's coming in. He's finished. He's absolutely finished. I've got a little bit more faith in Ramsdale. I think he's going to show some fight. And I don't yeah. think he deserves to be dropped. I like what I see from Aaron. I'm a big, big fan. And David Raya shouldn't just walk into the first team. He hasn't done anything to prove that he's going to be better than Ramsdale. He's got to fight for that place. And the way he does that is in the League Cup games, the FA Cup games. And if he gets a chance in the Champions League games, he proves why he should be number one. And that's how it should work. And that's how it should work all over the pitch. Trossard should be knocking on the door saying, hang on, mate, been your best player in pre-season. I'm still not playing. What's happening? Then when he gets to start, he's not good. He comes out. Sorry, mate, you didn't do it. That's what it should be, and it should be fair competition. You don't just dump somebody out because they're, they're, the the the, uh, the winger has given you a suicidal back pass and you might have had your positioning a bit wrong. It's more than that. You know, if he makes a mistake, we can, can we can seriously consider. If he has a howler, you know, like Loris was having and David De Gea was having, that's when you start bringing your goalkeeper in and saying, right, he's got pressure now. I don't think, personally, Matt Turner was good enough for Arsenal. I just don't. I, 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 that's just my opinion. And going to Forest proved that he weren't good enough for Arsenal, you know? So, for me, we've got two good goalkeepers now. But you're right. There's serious pressure. Um, listen, I've got the last few minutes because I've got to shoot off to another show. But um, yeah, last yeah, couple of minutes, yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you. I wanted to ask you. I mean, it's just been announced on, on one of the lads on, my, uh, on a WhatsApp group has said that we've rejected the approach from Chelsea for Smith Rowe. Uh, Chelsea have, have asked us and approached us about Emil Smith Rowe and the availability of him, and I'm being told that we've rejected it. So it looks like he is not for sale. Um, but the transfer window is still open, Lee. There's only a few days left, and I still think we're short, mate. And I'll tell you why. This is why I think Arsenal was still short. Okay, last season and the season before, we were short through strength in depth. Everyone said lack of strength in depth. Saliba, Saka, Rice. And Jesus at the moment are four players that cannot get injured because we don't have good enough cover in those positions, in my opinion. Now, let me give you an example of why that's the case. People will say, it's all right, Saliba and Tommy Asu both got injured at the same time. Fair play. It's January, Saliba goes down for six weeks. Let's put Tommy in. Oh, Tommy's not there. Why is he not there? He's gone to the Asian Cup. Where's Party? We can play him at right back. He's in the African Cup of Nations. We need to sort this out, mate. Yeah, because in yeah. January, we don't have Party and Tommy Asu as cover either, right? Tierney's now gone. So we ain't got left-back cover if because Timber's now out as well. So that's another two players that are now missing. 
We've got no one to cover for Saka still that's good enough, unless you keep Pepe and Nelson and think they're good enough. And we've just been debating who's better than Jesus when he's out. Is it Eddie? Is it Averts? Is it Trossard? So for me, there we're still three or four players short. And I'm worriedly, we've got four days left and there's more rumours of outgoings, not incoming. So yeah, to you, outgoings, I, I agree. You know what I mean? If, listen, if any players go, you know, listen, I, I get like some of the players that are on loan, like the Balligans and uh, Tavares and players like that that weren't featuring last season are going to go. That's, that, that's how, it, how it is. But it's it's players that are um, have been in the squad. You know, like, as you say, Tierney's been in the squad. You know, Timber's in the squad, and they're not going to be about for a whole season now. You know, um, as you say, Tommy Hassan can go down at any time. So can Shinchenko, by the way. His, his fitness record's not great, you know. So there are there are worries in there, like, you know. And, and you know, if you're going to get rid of Smith-Rowe, um, I'd probably say that Smith-Rowe is well down the pecking order at the moment. For, I don't understand why, but he is. Uh, especially after coming having a good um, tournament with England, um, that didn't, didn't help his cause. Vieira coming on and doing well either, did it? Well, no, that didn't help his cause, but that's that's you know Vieira took his chance. That's you know, uh, listen, that was a sensational yeah. twenty minutes of football. Um, it really was. So, um, the, the, you know, the, the lack of opportunity. So, yeah, you know, but you've got to get if you're going to say all right, sacrifice Smith Rowe, for instance, then you've got to get in. And, other players in other areas, as you say, right? Well, we, we might have to sacrifice Smith Rowe, but we're going to get a wide, uh, 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 a wide right player, or we're going to get another player in midfield. You know what I mean? Like, don't forget, Lakonga was um, <clears throat> another one that was out on loan the, the back part of last season. Yeah, and uh, you know, so I, I do think we need a little bit of cover in midfield still. Um, you know, it, I, I'd like to see Arsenal make another two signings. If I'll be really honest, minimum. Minimum, we've yeah. got like you know some some big big fixtures. Unless they're they're planning, all right, okay, we'll make some signings in January because they're going to have to make some signings if uh, or some loans or I don't know. If you, when you're looking out with you know two or three players missing at the uh, the back end of December, beginning of January, and of course you know as you well know, Dan, like you know that's when players start to tire. Um, through that heavy schedule that we've got, so it is a bit of a worry. It is a bit of a worry. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully, a couple of signings will come along. Hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. Um, we're definitely going to see some outgoings first, that's for sure. We've seen Tierney go, we've seen Balogun go. I expect to see Pepe leave somewhere or get his contract mutually terminated. Obviously, we've spoken about Laconga and Tavares, who were linked to earlier on in the season. We've still got Cedric and Holding at the club. All those players need to leave and find new clubs for me. Um, and I think we will see at least one player coming in. I do think that we might look at something around the timber injury. I also think that we're still short as a box-to-box -box midfielder as Rice is the only one. The others are all way too attacking for me. Um, and, of course, Jorginho and El Elneny are, are more sixes than eights. I also look at the right side of, of forward and think Jesus could potentially go out there and have one of them through the middle. But is that enough cover? Mm. And, of course, up top, people are still crying out for Ivan Tony in January. So a lot Odd, in my opinion, to do still. We've only a few days left to do it in. Um, but, of course, our eyes are now fixed towards that Manchester United game, which I'm sure we'll talk about later on in the week. Um, guys, we're going to leave it there because I've got to go and jump onto another stream. So please make sure you do me a favour. Make sure you head over uh, and put a like on this and a subscribe on this before you go. Um, Lee, that's been a pleasure, man. You, you, yeah, I'm really, gonna really enjoyable chat. Thing. But you just know, bear with control. me now that I do this right. You know what I mean? You've got to so press this, end this broadcast is, and then end broadcast again twice. So I'm right. sure you can do it. Well, I have to uh, do the guys. out intro first. Is that correct? Like, I press the well, button. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can do that. I'm going to well, try mate. it. I don't know if it's go going to work, but here we go. Like, right. So thank you for everybody watching. Thanks for the chat and all that. And thanks to you, Dan, as well. Always. I'm going for it now. <laughs>